I'm Malcolm Graham Wood, and I'm here at Core Finance for my CEO interview. My guest today is George Lucan, who is actually the managing director of Angus Energy. Welcome back, George. Great to see you. Good to see you too, Malcolm. Well, I'm just saying you've been a very, very busy man. Um, and uh, earlier this week, uh, you announced the acquisition of the remaining 49% uh, of the Salt Fleetby project, um, uh, amongst a number of other moving parts within that uh, RNS. So to begin with, if I may, I'd like you to tell us all about it, and then I can break down other things if we, um, if we think we need them. But uh, give us a run through of what you've been up to, if right. you would. Now, yeah, it was a quite complex RNS, but the, the simple part of it is we're doubling, uh, over doubling, uh, Angus overnight, uh, and there's a certain amount of uh, jiggery pokery going on in the background to make that work. Uh, but we we came to a point with our partners where our partners uh, wanted and to some degree needed uh, to um, to sell out. They 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 uh, there have been uh, some cash calls as you know for the last couple of months, and we've we've been honest about that. Um, and really. Uh, they were at a point where they, they couldn't uh, e e easily be confident about being able to meet meet them. So we had an opportunity here to acquire the asset uh, ahead of First Gas uh, at, at, a, at a price which they understood to be the market price of the asset ahead of First Gas. Uh, okay. It would not be the market price of the asset in one month's time. Uh, and that's just a, a fact of life, as we all know. So. You know, to make that really plain, if, if you took the uh, P90 valuation of our asset, uh, we had 51%, they had 49%, so it's more, broadly the same, we have the same tax position, it's 25.4 million, I think. And that was back in October, uh, and the P50 was in the 30s. Uh, now you're looking at substantially higher long-term gas prices than then, so somewhere in the 30s, uh, possibly even the high 30s, as we look at P50. Now we got out to 14. Uh, I can guarantee you that next month with gas flowing, there would have been any number of bidders who'd have taken that for a lot, lot more. Uh, so at the very, very least, you have Angus doubling its, its size, but really we're looking at, you know, uh, a, a, va a valuation discount here so large uh, that we couldn't say no to it. And that occasioned a number of things. One is uh, we had to move very, very quickly uh, to, to sort this out, to make sure that the loan facility remained uh, in, in good order. Uh, and also to get regulatory sign off for this, we had to raise a decent slug of money to make it a no questions asked deal. There isn't actually a consent we require, but we do, if you're not gonna go ahead with, that, with a, uh, a letter of comfort from our reg principal regulator, uh, the North Sea Transition Authority, formerly the OGA, then you've got to be very, very sure. And the one way of being very, very sure is to raise a lot of money and say, look, look here, we're solid. Uh, and that's what we went out and did. And we were able to raise that money, we'll come on to uh, this, um, at breakneck speed, which shows you uh, quite how attractive this asset is uh, to to uh, certain classes of very well uh, you know, well experienced and educated investors. So that that's essentially the deal is is out there. If we've raised uh, a decent slug of money, yes, there's dilution, uh, but the dilution is say thirty what right seventy percent of our old equity base, and and what we're doing is well over doubling the value of the company. So it's great. It's it's accretive for shareholders, massively accretive. Uh, the, the price was 1.4 before we did this deal. I can guarantee the price can only go north in the long run, and even in the medium term. So um, you've raised um, six million in the during the transaction, and uh, you're receiving. I mean, it's you know the, the long and short is that uh, uh, we, I'd love to get sort of uh, down to the, the detail a bit regarding you know the cash and the shares element of the deal. And of course, um, you've now got strategic investors aboard, yeah. um, Angus, and they are Forum and Alep. 
Uh, both names we know uh, in connection with you before. So run us through the, you know, the, the, the cash and the shares and the, and the two new strategic investors, if you would. Yes. So to get actually acquire the asset, we paid a quarter of a million to, uh, in cash to Forum uh, and uh, about seven million in shares. One million of that was for them to dispose of immediately. That's the only the only shares that have been placed in the market in the, in the general market uh, as of this 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 date. So they were sold by Forum. Uh, we understand, and the remaining shares Forum's locked up on, and the lock up is for three months for everything, and then they're allowed to release twenty five percent every three month period thereafter. But I can tell you that they won't be releasing them, and I'm absolutely convinced of this. They know uh, as much as we know that this was an exceedingly sweet deal for Angus. And if they're to enjoy a lot of the upside in this transaction, the only way they're going to do that is by hanging on to those shares. So we're very confident that you're looking at a very long-term uh, strategic shareholder in the form of Forum. And Forum will end up with about 20% of this company uh, when all of these transactions are completed. So uh, that, that's, that's one side of the transaction. But the other side is who did we raise from? Well, that's Aleph. Uh, Aleph represent uh, a group of uh, family private offices and, and very wealthy investors. Uh, and they are experienced. They understand this hydrocarbon market very well. And they, some of them were involved in supporting the loan facility. So they, uh, um, they have a, a good understanding of the dynamics of the actual asset. Uh, and, and they have come to a, a level of trust in the company and its management. So it's a tremendous endorsement to have, you know, your lenders step out uh, of their, you know, ironclad senior debt roles uh, into the, the riskier market of equity. So now, I think that is a, a great sign. Now, theirs, theirs is a strategic um, stake as well. So they they had requested the permit, the right to uh, approve two nominations to um, the board of the company. Uh, the the board will then be seven. Um, uh, seven people, and uh, and we're very very happy with that. And uh, the the names that they're able to um, introduce us to, I have to say, uh, the shareholders won't be disappointed to see these sorts of names. And one of the reasons they're doing this is they want to see Angus grow. So they 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 want uh, a a willing, intelligent, flexible, and nimble Western regulated listed company. Uh, out there acquiring assets in a market that's in rapid change and flux and where there are plenty of opportunities uh, to do interesting transactions. So it's not only, uh, uh, it's not a passive uh, shareholder, but it's, it's, a, it's an interested and supportive shareholder. It's exactly what we want, able to bring not only deal flow, but skill uh, and understanding to, to our business. So they, that's good. I mean, uh, so we're... Um... Um, first of all, um, what uh, percentage stake in uh, Angus will these both these companies have after the uh, event? And uh, uh, where are they located, the, the, the two of them, uh, George? Uh, uh, Forum is, is essentially uh, one individual. He's coming on the board, Mr. Paul Forrest. Yeah. Uh, he's been known to Angus for many years. Yeah. Uh, and um, the, and uh, he's a UK national. Uh, the others are a mixture of uh, UK and some US um, um, individuals, and uh, I think one or two European. Um, so a, a mix of uh, very uh, wealthy individuals uh, and offices, and uh, they'll be run or managed, uh, that, that sort of shareholding run or managed out of London, of course, um, Good. in terms of direct operational control. They'll each own 20%. So Lovely. Well, that's good. Um, the other thing I was going to ask was, and you mentioned it briefly there, of course, is that um, Aleph have been the people who have been providing the loan for the work at Salt, Fleet, Salt Fleetby lately. Um, and that is due to be paid off this year, isn't it? We'd like, we'd like to think with a successful sidetrack that would be gone by year end. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, or, 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 or thereabouts. So, yes, it's, it, the cash flow is tremendous. Um, uh, with this asset now um, in, in full production coming in. Full Good. Um, would it be okay if we uh, talk a little bit more about operational side of it, uh, George? I'd love to know what um, 
the progress is uh, on site. Uh, I keep seeing pictures on Twitter of uh, huge uh, pieces of kit and pipes and cranes and things like that. Uh, so how is the uh, commissioning coming on? And of course, when do you expect first gas? Yes, right. Well, it, it, all, all equipment is on site, which is, uh, and it, it's not it's a not a trivial task tying it all in. Uh, it, there is three kilometres of pipe work on a tiny field, basically, <laughs> all, all, all woven round. And that's in total we calculated some three thousand steel welds. Uh, so um, and probably 2,000 electrical connections. Uh, so we have uh, a, an army of welders um, <laughs> and, and electricians there right now. And have, we, had any trouble, have we had any trouble getting the, uh, the parts or the staff to do it? Uh, the staff, fun enough, yes, a little bit. Um, we've, we've had to uh, fight and beg and plead. There's uh, some big projects around the country uh, which have been starting up again, as, as the sort of life's come back into the economy. Uh, and um, there's a, one particularly big nuclear project going on down in, down in the south. So uh, that's chewing up a lot of people. But no, <laughs> we, 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 we've, uh, we've, we've, we've won a really good crew there uh, in the welders and the electricians. We're really pleased with the progress. I think we've, um, we've got, uh, we're already hydro testing, which is the next stage after welding. And we will complete 80% of the hydro testing on Tuesday evening. Uh, we then move into the first phase of um, sort of uh, hydro testing is a, is a early phase of dry commissioning. The, the, the next phase will be function test, testing some, some of the key valves. Uh, and then we move into testing the computing systems. And then you move into leak testing. And then we backflow some gas to clear the pipeline from the grid and then we actually start introducing methane into the plant and that's the wet commissioning phase um, and uh, it's slightly how long is a piece of string but in the instance of this facility we're advised by uh, the commissioning director that uh, they're, they're very few moving parts it's slightly uh, it, it works or it doesn't and we've got to believe that it does it's had so many companies <laughs> look at it um, this is not a lot you can adjust um, it's very much solid state throughout. Yeah. So we'd hope we're aiming for uh, first gas around the middle of June. And we're all very conscious as a company that we've got a hedge kicking in at um, the end of June. And that is a, is a drop dead date, if you like, for us. And well, yeah, hedge, hedging was going to be my next question. So <laughs> um, well, well, but before, before I, I do that and, and the consequences of that, those things, there's a high level of confidence that we will, um, we will get our first gas before that thing kicks in. Um, uh, and if there weren't such a high level of confidence, I can tell you with that equity that we raised earlier this week, uh, albeit people may resent it, um, that yeah. would have been forthcoming from the experienced individuals concerned if they weren't also confident. That we would yeah. And so you've got hedging, and of course, that is that part and parcel of the loan deal? Uh, no, it's unrelated to it. It, it hadn't. They met there. There is some overlap in terms of investors um, in in the debt and in the equity, but no, it, it's unrelated. We did require lender consent to do this transaction, and as with the regulators, we did need to do a game of show the, show the money. So we did need yeah. to show strength, um, and and we've done that to the satisfaction of all all of the lenders. Um, uh, 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 and the lend the primary lender is also the hedger. So they have a great interest in, in seeing this facility come online and they're closely monitoring every day. So yeah, we're, we're, we're happy with progress. So um, what uh, gas price are you going to be tied into? What, what's your thoughts about the gas price uh, in the UK at the moment? With you know? Well, it, it's, it's um, I, I think when we did our CPR in October, we were showing an immensely sharp, high forward curve in, in these near months over the next sort of six to 12 months. And what's changed since then uh, out in the forward curve in the market is that you're looking out three, four, three years, four years, and it's still rocket high. So that's what's come out, is that people are now saying, this is not a blip. This is not a problem for 2022, maybe the beginning of 23. This is a problem now, a systemic one 
which is a shortage of gas across the Western world, and a recognition too, that to bring a field online, you know, any North Sea field or a West African field, is probably four years from, five years from conception. And that, that really hadn't sunk in to some of the market traders back in October, but it's definitely there now. And even, even to build an LNG facility, when people talk about switching to LNG, you know, <laughs> five to eight years. To yeah. Get, to get one of those um, uh, um, liquid, um, you know, uh, gasification plants online in, in Europe. So there's a there's a there's a real recognition we've got higher for longer prices, and and that's transformed the economics of this transaction. Really transformed it. If we were, and perhaps we should, to rerun a CPR, I think you'd be everyone would be very pleasantly surprised. Uh, by, by the result today so yes it's great excellent um you say in the uh in the rns uh, in the week that um once you've got that underway and so on you're going to start focusing on other opportunities if you weren't already busy enough but um uh, i wondered you, a few weeks ago you announced that brockham was back in production is is that the sort of other opportunity something that's already in the portfolio or are you looking outside the portfolio very much looking outside, uh, but also looking back now, we've, we're over this hump. Remember, we've spent three months in and out of these strategic reviews and with takeover uh, bids, and, uh, and which is which is quite draining in terms of um, compliance and paperwork. Uh, and now we're out. We're looking back as well at continuing to. I'm going to use the word, not a great word, gestate. <laughs> geothermal uh, ambitions that means getting back into continuing to do subsurface there and and lift the bar on levels of confidence about that and even dip our toe in into um, the world of pre-planning and planning applications so that's that's a very exciting area but i think when where we're looking and one of the reasons that you saw the size of the investment uh, we had earlier this week it, is for much more substantial assets uh, beyond so yes. So so fifty barrels a day from Brockham ain't going to be the future of the. <laughs> no, no, I don't think that's what that money came in for. But, uh... <laughs> I must ask you before we go off gas prices and everything else, and I know you've only had uh, a few hours to think about it. Have you had a had a chance to look at the uh, how the windfall tax uh, or the levy, as it's now being called, uh, might affect um, Angus at this stage, uh, George? I, I did have a look. Uh, it's very, very opaque as usual. We've just got these uh, sibylline utterances from the minister um, or the chancellor. What uh, our, our own particular position is, is that both Angus and Salt Pleatby have, have a, somewhere between 20 and 30 million uh, pounds worth of tax losses each. Um, so it, it, to the extent that they're taking any notice of historical ring fence losses, then um, then, uh, then, then we shouldn't be hit. And to the extent they're taking any notice of uh, structural investment, where we've just poured, you know, 12, 12 10, 10 odd million pounds uh, into various bits of cap very expensive capital equipment. Uh, so I'd hope uh, that those two things provide a measure of protection. Uh, I can understand why, why the Chancellor moves in this direction, but I, I, I don't see us as being um, the, the, the main target. I would imagine the main target is mature cash producing fields yeah, with yeah. or no investment who are just um, creaming. Um, Good. Thanks for that. Um, just to, uh, to go back, we've only got a couple more to go because of the time, but back in April, um, you had, uh, you made an announcement, said that the uh, you were putting the either the company or the major asset uh, up for sale. Uh, and you said that you had sort of five or six uh, indications of interest in the company and then when sound withdrew from the process um you took or you stopped the um formal sales process but said that there were still two potential buyers of the uh, uh or two potential people who had interest in salt fleetly um where are we in all that little process uh, george yes uh, well we are um we're we, we have had uh, ongoing discussions. Uh, in one instance, the, the, the timing of a counterparty was not um, was not uh, going to uh, uh, it was going to be about a month before we could resume any discussions. Yeah. So they're, they're on hold. 
And in the case of the other counterparty, I think that ultimately they wanted I had such assurances that first gas would happen on the nail. Um, yeah. But, um, it would be very difficult to give, give them that level of comfort. So it's still an open door there. But, you know, I think I keep on making the point to potential bidders who are concerned. Is yes, when, when, when people approached us earlier this year, yes, you can have all sorts of assurances and contingencies around first gas, but then this comes to look more and more like a guaranteed deal. And when it's guaranteed deal, you've really got to pay a lot more. Uh, and uh, people want to get away with a low price and guarantees. Uh, that's harder to do. So that's really why I pushed that away. And shareholders, I, I, you know, I read the board, same as, same as you, and there was a strong sense of do not sell this on the cheap. So uh, ultimately we've said, we've, we've given that message back, but there's open doors to, to two people. And you know, we 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 don't we don't write off having discussions at a corporate level either, um, to, to, with interested parties. I'm strongly of the view, the board is strongly of the view, and these new investors are of the view that that grow growing in in hydrocarbons is essential. That it is no longer acceptable to sit around, uh, you know, at, at right, the well, um, all end of the end. You know. Thank you. I very much appreciate that uh, candor of that uh, answer and. Um, well, time's passing, almost past, uh, George. We've had uh, we've had a good run. So, um, what I'd like to do, as I always do at the end, is just to say, you know, wrapping up everything that we've talked about uh, today. I uh, wonder if you could just say, you know, where you would like to see Angus uh, over the next twelve to eighteen months once uh, things have settled down and all your corporate stuff is underway. Well, a significantly larger company, definitely a, a huge cash generator. And, uh, and we discussed this with uh, these new investors, which is uh, some uh, a company with a with a defined dividend payout policy, uh, and, and one at the higher end of uh, the normal range across the uh, across the egg. So, well, that's very positive indeed. Thank you so much for your time this, uh, today, uh, George. It's been very kind of you, and especially given how uh, busy I know that you are. Thank you. Cheers, it's a pleasure. I've been Malcolm Grenwood doing my CEO interview on uh, Core Finance. Today, my guest has been actually the managing director of uh, Angus Energy, uh, George Lucan. I'd like to thank him for uh, taking time to be with us today. I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Bye now.